Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special episode of Was That In Good Taste? I'm one of your hosts, and tonight my name is going to be Chandler Phillips. And with me, as always, is another one of your hosts, and his name is going to be... I'm James Beery. And remember to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to engage with the world around you. Remember to be present. But mostly, remember to subscribe to us, because if you don't, I wither away into dust. Don't worry, Tinkerbell. The more the kids believe in you, the more power you'll have. And the m that means if all the kids believe in you, you can fight God. I do believe in I podcasters. Believe. I do believe in I podcasters. Believe. I believe. Now let's fight God together. So how have you been today, James? Oh, well. Things are interesting. My whole life is maybe changing and my job is different, or not at all. So we're going to find out about that. Mm. Sounds like a lot of things are up in the air. You know what that means, though? I don't. That means I just I just need to get... I just, I'm just trying. I'm here. It sounds to me like you could use a stiff drink after a stiff day. I, I definitely feel like I do. You know what I feel like? I feel like I need some friends and I to go around and just go out and perhaps drink copious amounts of delicious beverages. You know what? That sounds like a good time and a fun time. And uh, I hope you find those friends. Oh, yeah. I hope you're able to uh, indulge in these habits with, uh, with people who can do that with you. Who aren't you? Okay, I understand. Um, we got a fun little cocktail that we put together and prepared um, well ahead of time. We actually have been working on this cocktail for a while, and it wasn't just put together. This is totally planned. It's completely um, premeditated, and uh, we've put a lot of thought and effort into this. Every aspect of this was considered. And it was deliberate, really. I think intentionality in this cocktail is really what shines through on each and every individual level. Um, it's a gin and tonic with a little bit of a a little bit of a uh, remix r r r remix like not having anything to measure it with okay exactly you know because what is a drink with friends if it's not just eyeballed while oh, you're also I trying to make eye contact with a camera I jumped the gun um what do you what do you mean you jumped the gun I decided not to do it you do you you don't want to do it. I I've decided you should do it. Oh, how how courteous, how <laughs> how thoughtful, and how considerate. Well, we're gonna do a gin and tonic that's spruced up with a splash of lychee juice, and topped with a little bit of uh, apple soju. A little bit of apple soju. Okay, which of course we've talked about rice wine before. This is a sweetened rice rice wine. We have <laughs> rice wine. What? We have this delicious seacum gin. This, what is? I don't know what Indian tonic is. I think Indian tonic is a little drier. We have a little bit of this lychee juice and fruit, as well as yeah, oh God, you're done. Yay! That's all the things. Um, what else should the people know about this drink? Why do we have this lychee juice? What's oh, what's the, I, what's because I'm deal? obsessed because I'm obsessed with lychee. Uh, so lychee are, I don't know, they're seed like. You ever had a canapa? No. What's a canapa? Oh my God, a canapa is like a lychee. Or like a rambutan. A they, rambutan? Yeah, they have... That's the thing that um, Ram Jam talks about when they're like, oh, Black Betty, rambutans, oh, Black oh Betty, God. Black Shabam. The, the skin is a little uh, rough. It's a little... It's like two or three oh, centimeters shit. deep. You crack it open, and then inside there's like this meaty kind of sweet fruit that's surrounding a pretty hard pit. It's kind of like a fibrous material connecting them. Is it like a stone fruit pit, like a peach? It, it is It is kind of stone fruity. Ain't life a peach? I wish I knew more about lychee. Um, I think I kind of fucked up the whole theme of the cocktail because it was like courtesy and the thing with like soju is like the courteous thing. That's why, I, that's why first. I stopped. So I actually, <laughs> I poured it in mine first thinking like, <laughs> oh, well like, if I fuck up the measurements first, I'll fuck and it you, up. And you messed up the courtesy. And and I messed up the courtesy in action. I expected you to do it correctly. Which I, I think is kind of the theme of the episode is um, one person's courtesy is another person's um, open-handed slap to the face. So you know? this would not be courteous. 
What what One do thing, you wait, okay. What do you discourteous? You need more tonic? Yeah, I feel like somebody might have gone a little too heavy on the gin. And also the soju because Look how much soju you used. You used like half the bottle. Oh, that's delicious. This I don't know what you're talking soju. about. Soju. Oh my god, that's amazing. You know, the more of these you have, the that's, less courteous you are. That's so crisp and refreshing. Um, I don't know what your problem with this drink is. That is delightful. This is not even. What could you call? What this is? What, what this is a cocktail? It's a it's a tall drink. It's a tall drink. There are short drinks, there are coupe drinks, there are things that are served up, things that are served neat. This is a tall drink. You ever have somebody come to your house and you give them some food? You've taken your time to prepare a delicious meal. Perhaps you've made a bolognese or a beef wellington. Let's say a wellington, you take it, you've done, you did, you've done everything, okay? It's the outside, it's delicious, it's crispy, the bottom is not soggy. <gasps> Not a soggy bottom. You slice into it and you get and you place it on a plate. You slide it over to your friend, <laughs> and they reach over, and grab a salt shaker, and they start shaking fucking salt on it. Salt, salt, or pepper, or anything. Salt and pepper. Without having tasted it. Salt and pepper. I'm like, okay, you clearly are going for a thing. Maybe maybe you just you, you know something about you, and that's okay. Charitable, okay. I'm, I'm being charitable here. It's when you go for a sauce. If you try to decorate a well, like if, if not a not a well cooked, but a a a, a, a state, especially especially a beef Wellington. What if you think you've made it correctly, right? If I'm what, serving it, I know I made if, it correctly. But what if you didn't? What do you mean if I didn't? What if you made? A I burger? wouldn't. I wouldn't give it. I wouldn't give it to. I wouldn't. Al- I wouldn't allow it into the public forum if I didn't think I did it correctly. What if it was a uh, wagyu burger in your vision, and I asked for ketchup, and ketchup was not part of the vision? Yeah, that's fine. It's a burger. It's a burger. Huh? Look at that inconsistent. No, it's a burger. You have ketchup with a burger. I think there's you something don't you don't have ketchup with a beef Wellington. I think there's something now if I had made a specific like uh, a mushroom uh, type of uh, uh, demi glace to go with uh, a sauce for for a steak. Yeah, yeah, use that. But no, no, no what put, if I want to? What if I want a one? Wouldn't you find it discourteous? I would find it a slap to the face. I would say, what do you mean you you get put an A1 sauce on there? What do you think? The people who are just mass producing A1. What if A1 I know or... something about me? You just said that. What if what if I know something about me? No, but that's that's that for you just don't know. that's only extends to salt and pepper. For any of the sauces, um I know better than I know you better than you in that regard. If you if you need if you need a little bit of salt, you need a little bit of pepper. That's one thing. It sounds it's, like you didn't salt your food well enough. Sounds like you're over salting your food. Sounds like you want some fucking beef jerky. <laughs> you don't want beef Wellington. You want beef Welling dumb. This is very strong. This is delightful. This is know. uh. You can barely taste the gin. There's like it, no gin in this. You can. Barely taste the good decisions. It's mostly ice. This is like a clear Long Island almost. What what, what, what would you call a that? Clear Long Island. Um, what is that? A Montauk? Ooh, what would be in a Montauk? A Montauk. I. <sighs> so you'd have like the basics of a Long Island. That's like a dark rum, a tequila, a vodka. You'd have to have a gin, and I think you would have a brandy. A brandy. A brandy instead of a whiskey in a Montauk. If you're having a Ronkonkoma Long Island iced tea, then you substitute tequila for um oh, like a like a Slivovitz type thing. I think you would replace Slivovitz with a tequila and you would replace everything else. Also with tequila. With it, for a Ronkonkoma? Yeah. Iced tea? You ever taken a train to Ronkonkoma? 
once. <sighs> once. And I refuse to do it again. There, throwing back shooters, just sitting there next to you on the train. You're trying to, you're going, you're going home from work, maybe. You're going to go see a friend. Some guy sitting next to you, his whole, his head lulling over as he belches in your face. You're concerned. That's What's going to happen? That's discourteous. Someone belches in your face. Well, uh, so, uh, one of the things that that inspired this episode of courtesy is there is just such a drastic difference and i think the type of courtesies that you'll see in the west coast was that courtesy east coast. he made it i just decided to do whatever i wanted to it and the thing is the more you know someone the more you can f- fold over bend and otherwise disrupt the boundaries of common courtesy and that's where you get into specialized courtesy see it's no common courtesy but what you did was a specialized it wasn't it wasn't the common it was a regal courtesy if anything it was like a limited rare it's courtesy, a, like a shiny like a foil that was courtesy. a holographic courtesy where you were trying your drink and you thought oh this tastes off i'm sure his drink tastes off as well and you, under the guise of thinking that you have a more a more refined palate than me, I mean, me, I did see that you compensated by putting the lollipop in your beverage. I didn't compensate. The lollipop was in the beverage before I even poured the damn drink. You could check the tape. You could check the tape. But you did the courtesy of extending what you thought was um, was nice and generous. Uh, and how did you feel about that? Well, let me try the drink first. Fuck you. Ugh. Fuck you. Ugh. It's you it. This tam- is over. It's game just over. Tampering <laughs> with my This is, you know, this is why That's Civil like one of the Wars worst things bought. somebody could really do is think they is really put something in your drink. <laughs> just pull a Cosby. It's like really do something that they think that they know about you better than you do. Ugh. And I don't mean like a you like your coffee black. You know what I mean? Where like somebody tries to like hook you up with somebody and they're like, Oh, you always like short curvy blondes. And you're like, No, well, you one don't time, fucking know one time me. I was in the supermarket and I like looked in the direction of a woman and now you just think that's what I like. It's kind of like why when you're when you're a young kid and you're first picking like like the first time you have an animal that you're kind of infatuated with or you're like, those animals are fucking dope. You have to be real clear that like this is a phase because mm-hmm, sometimes mm-hmm. then you get kind of pigeon held and people are like, oh, this kid loves owls. And it's like, no, this kid doesn't love owls. This kid said that they were like reading a book on owls and were like having an owl's phase. And now everything that their aunt and uncles and every extended family who doesn't know what they want to get for the kid is just like, fuck it, let's get them something owl related, you know, as a fucking owl. And you just kid. never know where it came from, where it started. And it's just like, now you're the owl's kid. Actually, it's so funny because I had like a picture of little Kim on my wall and it was signed. When that's, I had like, that's kind of dope. When I had like 12 or 13, my mother said to me, I knew, always thought you really loved little Kim. And you know what I said to her? I thought that was yours <laughs> because that's that's exactly that like vibe that feeling. And like, like I don't fucking I just have the thing I, like, because this is I'm just here this has nothing I'm to do young with me and I don't know how to how to curate my own taste. Yeah. It's like what, me? No, no, no. This wasn't me. This was you. It's so interesting too because I, I like that's kind of a universal experience where at one point you step back and you're like I don't. I don't actually like this. So I just was kind of, it was foisted upon me and I made the best out of a weird situation. It always makes me think about my ex's son because he loved like toy cars, right? Yeah. So every time, and this is me, I'm like, oh, let's go to Target. I'm like, you can get anything you want. As long as it's a toy car. Knowing that he only wants toy cars. But then I started to think and realize maybe he doesn't actually like toy cars. Because whenever we would go, I'd be like, take whatever one you want. He'd always find a reason. And so eventually he said that he only liked them when they had, like, uh, the rear, rear view mirrors. And huh. none of them had rear view mirrors. So I think that he might have gotten tired of people constantly giving him 
Toy cars. Toy cars. That's fucking brilliant. But that was very courteous on him to not be like, well, actually, I don't fucking like your gift. He was like anymore. five years old. What do you think he's going to do? Well, actually, I don't like this. I think I'd prefer a copy of the Communist Manifesto. Yeah, I mean, he's five. He's got to learn that shit by now. <laughs> Come on. Or that really happened. Okay. I think that, like, there's... There's an interesting dichotomy of courtesies in that there's things that you just kind of assume are like the 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 common courtesy and then you find out that like there's there's just a different approach. And here's my example is like driving. Um I've driven long distances around the west coast and just around the western part of the United States and there's like a common courtesy that you leave at least a car length between you and the next car. That's the law. So for the merging. law is that you need a car. It's supposed to be more than one car length. However, I have ridden in countless Ubers in and around New York City where that just isn't the case. Uh. Like you just you just don't. You mean like how I was riding my skateboard and there was an Uber driving in front of me less than a car length, going really slow for no reason, and then no hazards, no nothing, just went to a full stop, and so I crashed into the back of him like that? Did you, did you break the window? No. That would have that that been like cool action sequence, and then you're in the car. And I did. Like, <laughs> I, took my, I was like, F you, mother effer. Just like that, though. It's not F- motherfucker. Hey, hey, F, F you, you mother F. Like in a, like in a, hey, <laughs> hey, you know what's so funny? You're like, so full of crap. The guy, it's so the guy stops short. I smash into his car, and he go. Everybody goes, "Are you okay?" And I go, "Leave me alone, you mother effer!" <laughs> and I just, drew, I just rode off. I said, "Wait a second, <laughs> you're gonna activate the villain in me." Dear diary, today I was riding my skateboard and somebody in front of me was not being considerate. <laughs> Maybe it's time someone taught them a lesson. Oh, God. You're so good at that. Oh, thanks. I can I, just uh, imagine you right now with your bangs, <laughs> just like in front of your face. Just, uh, nobody else understands because they're too busy wrapped up in their own silly little lives. And it's so funny because you say that, but that was actually me. Yeah. And just walking around like... Like my girlfriend. She's like, Nobody's she's an, actually living in the real world. She's an energy vampire. That's how we met. When, now, when you say <laughs> energy vampire, um, like to you personally, or was that like her her aesthetic? Well, she was low on energy when I first met her. Okay. So I gave her some of my so you, force. You siphoned <laughs> off. Um, is it how? <laughs> What's the transaction of an energy vampire like? Like, is it a? Well, do, you, do, you, do you feel kind of like a like a gas station pump where you like there's the numbers and it's like, <laughs> and then you could cut it off right at like twenty percent and you're like, all right, I can rock with like sixty percent energy left. It's very like right Ashurion, you know. It's like it's like hey 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 chill chill man chill bro. Uh, like you once, know I'm going until you stop me, okay? Once they pop, they just can't stop. <laughs> this is game over. You know you that's know? why they call me the Pringles of energy, is because I'm full of sodium. Wow, that sounds delicious. Actually, what's yeah. your blood type? Um, I think it's oh. It's so funny because, okay, we were talking about, okay, different things. Yeah. Like uh, what it means to even be considerate. Yeah. And so I, I don't really understand. What, what it means to be considerate? Yes. Because okay, so have you ever tried, like, being like empathetic? You, like you want another person? So, okay, it's like this <laughs> weird kind of thing that... I think a lot of humans experience, but not all of them. But it's where, like, you see someone having an emotion, right? And then you're like, what if I just kind of wear that emotion a little bit as if I'm them? And I just kind of wear their skin. 
and like pretend to be them. What if you're thin skinned and it affects you a lot? What if the person that you're looking at doesn't express their emotions the way that you are used to receiving or understanding emotions? Oh, then they're wrong. Then they're wrong <laughs> and incorrect. And um, they should actually, they deserve to be corrected swiftly and forcefully. Tell me, what does it mean? Hmm? It means to just kind of know the vibe, you know? It's less of a meaning and more than a feeling. You may know someday that it's Because there, there's all these, like, feeling. predetermined ideas of, like, what we should do and how we should do them. How we should behave, how we should navigate the world around us. It's like there's 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 these unspoken traffic laws, but for, like, humans. Like, human trafficking laws. Most of them are, I think, kind of either wrong or don't really allow for empathy. Mm. Because we don't know people. We don't know how they are, who they are, where they came from. And so when we interact with people, right? So let's say you made, you spent time Me. making something. You spent hours of your labor pouring your energy into something. So you want the person to experience it the way that you want them to experience it. Mm -hmm. But you don't know or appreciate the way that they experience it. And so when people do things for themselves, it can come off to us as inconsiderate. You mean and they operate in a mode that doesn't consider the way that I consider them no. operating around me? No, no, because we're so concerned about them considering us. Oh, because I feel like yeah. that's really the root of the whole thing, which is it's not what is the right thing to do because I think people often just know the right thing to do. It's that people want sometimes, they want and expect people to consider them or think about them or whatever word you'd like to use in the way that they'd like to be, if that makes sense. Can I pose to you a hypothetical situation that may or may not have happened? Pose. So I think the subway. Pose. Vogue. Pose. 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 Have a girl. Vogue. The subway is an example of where, if you know, you know, kind of courtesy takes place. Sometimes you you see like if you're an a uh, a. Uh, 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 a person who can stand for longer periods of time than maybe you assume that someone else can't stand for as long of periods of time, um, either due to age or pregnancy, disability, etc., whatever. You may get up from your subway seat and and offer your seat as a as a courtesy. Of course. It's not mandatory. No one's saying like, hey, this is a rule that if if someone who fits into this category steps onto the subway, everyone must offer their seat. But there is the general common courtesy that it's like, hey, come on, come on. So situation, uh, you're out of stop and you see some people get off the subway. Not a lot of people get back on. In fact, barely any. And you see that what was once an empty seat is now an open seat. But there's other people who are standing on the subway. Maybe you see um, some people who um, you know look uh, look look like they just got off of like a nine to five kind of shift. And you give it you give it a beat. You give it a beat, and no one's making an immediate move for that empty seat. And so you just kind of you mosey, and then you sit down. But it just so happens that right as you sit down, another person was was actually moving towards that seat, who started out actually closer towards the seat. And then let's say, let's say you're a, a white woman who, who, who... A white woman who got who got to the seat first and and the person who who didn't get to the seat was a person of color and uh, 
there there is kind of like a visible upsetness or like a not upsetness but in like a like you could tell the mood is like ugh, white women just taking shit that they want again who's who's actually in the wrong here courtesy wise courtesy wise i'm i'm curious if like what's are there are there more unwritten rules to what degree does race relations play in common courtesy are you supposed to like i think it's, it's complicated when you're dealing with interacting in like public spaces right it's all about like consideration of others and what that means depends on like where you are so obviously people always say like oh well if you're in in, in a big city in china you're used to people like shoving you being around you being close to you because they're a very populous city right you know mm -hmm. the same thing in lots of countries the, the personal space bubble yeah. is uh is a little bit more compacted yeah. um <laughs> you unfortunately so i'm gonna tell you a brief story uh, many years ago, when I worked for a certain Queen Siren large coffee company, I had been working so long. I was working from 7 in the morning to 11 at night and often working off the clock because I am a dummy dumb and my feet would hurt so much. I had never experienced in my life that agony. I started getting the plantar fasciitis that's where like the arch of your foot mm -hmm. starts to flatten i was getting this sharp shooting pains through my feet and i remember getting on the train and i would always stand because it was only west 4th street it was only like five or six stops home and i remember one day i got on the train and there was a seat and i sat in the seat you sat in the seat and in front of me was an older woman she looked tired and she didn't look happy that i'd taken the seat Mm. And were I, there were there any other potentially open seats? There were not. <gasps> but guess what? There were just a bunch of oldies and pregos in the rest of the seats. I stayed in the seat. <sighs> because guess what? There's other people. They can get up. I was hurting. And when that's it, okay. Race relations in New York are complicated, okay? I'm not trying to... Racism obviously exists, uh, uh, duh. But when you're wait, on the wait, train... Wait, no. Obama was president. What, I know, right? Wait, what? <laughs> if you're on the train at 4 o'clock and you're 42nd Street, okay? If your feet hurt and there's a seat, you sit. You sit if you because, see a seat, you sit. Because... You don't wait around. You don't, like, mosey to shit. And if you do mosey, you're, give, you're giving the... Cur the fact that if you see a seat and you don't immediately like fucking hot potatoes chairs, what is it? Uh, musical chairs sit down in it, then I'm sorry, you snooze it, you lose it. But this is where we have a problem. And this is the lack of empathy because what the person should do, and this is the best thing is to ask the person, like, I wouldn't say, do you need to sit? But like, the reality is the world we should live in because. I really want to attach the race thing because you mentioned it. I think that in, was in that New was York, a main, main in New, part and in of New it. York. The reason why I told that story that way is because I think in New York, once you're in the train, depending on where you are, right, your race either doesn't or doesn't matter, right? Mm. You downtown, you to you real far downtown. You in Brooklyn? If you're in Brooklyn on the four and the five, right? For people who don't know, there's different train lines. They go to different parts of different boroughs, right? So I'm in Brooklyn. If you're closer to downtown Brooklyn then like you're gonna get a nice demographic mix. It used to be you get up to one twenty fifth street, all the white people get off the train, and then all the black people sigh sigh of relief and then they go for a seat, right? But when it comes down to rush hour, especially when it comes down to seats packed, mm -hmm. I don't see color. <laughs> I only, I only I don't see, see empty seats. And I don't think nobody else does. And that's actually I think a grander lack of like general consideration for people around them. Right, because there's like perceived, the perceived consideration is like somebody who looks older than you. What do people, what do people who look older than you look? You don't fucking know. People look like you sometimes, but a little bit older. Like, how are you gonna know, right? You know, like, but like they won't give if they're actually tired. They won't give a fucking seat to somebody with a cane. We there's like perceived consideration and real consideration. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. like I get it. Like, listen. You know, I'm always talking about race, you know, but like when you're on the fucking train and your feet hurt, you're less caring about what the person in front of you looks like and more like I need to sit my fucking ass down because I'm hurting.
It's your uh, pyramid of needs, Maslow's pyramid of needs, where you're like, I, I don't, I don't care about being virtuistic right now. I just care about sitting my ass down. And it's crazy because the perceived and common ones, you know, eh, I've met people and been around people and spent a lot of time with people who like don't know certain things, right? Because they weren't socialized around mm. certain things or didn't experience certain things. So when like you with somebody and they go to the store and they pay for their money and the person's like overly nice to them and then they don't say thank you, but they didn't like do anything wrong. They were just like, okay and fine and just like. They were just kind of curt. Yeah, they were just like, thank you and left. And you perceive that the way they're supposed to behave a little bit more enthusiastic is the way that you think they should. Cause you're like, I'm putting on a work sona right now and I have to do this for eight hours a day. You can at least put on a customer sona for 25 seconds. And when you get called out on that, you start to realize that like there's a difference between like real needs and like wants, right? Like, yeah. you know what you need is if you're hurting a person who isn't hurting or who can endure the pain slightly more than you to stand up to allow you to sit, right? But what you expect is anyone to get up for you because you're older or you or you look a certain kind of way, yeah. but not because you're disabled, because then anybody should get up for you if they're able-bodied because people don't care because they only perceive the thing that they can, it's like very strange. It's very specific because if you go uptown, you'll see people on the train and definitely, especially like this Hispanic neighborhood, you see an older person, they're like, ah, oh, get up, make sure they sit down. Yeah. But what if I'm hurting? Well, fuck you. They're what, if, old. what if I'm hurting the same amount? Well, fuck you. You're young. What if I'm hurting more? Well, fuck you. Just fuck, fuck you. You know, I, so another, another one. Another courtesy thing is like when you're getting on or going down into the subway using the stairs or whatever, and you see someone with like a shopping cart and it's just a one person, and they're like, how often, how often do you offer to help them get up the stairs? Okay. <laughs> I've been working outside and I have been. Working pretty early and pretty hard. And I was working out. And my shoulder has been a little tender. And then for some reason, my, my wrist is tweaked. And I just feel like... on Wait, do you have a twicked wrist? Twicked? <laughs> twe <laughs> a do tweaked you wrist. Do you have a tweaked wrist on one hand and a hurt shoulder be honest, on the other? Really, it's the whole side. I think it's because I used to fall a lot when I was skate. But I so you have one good side. I, it, I definitely do. It feels like it. I think when I used to skate a lot, I used to always fall on my left side. Mm. So, like, even though I feel fine, like, if I feel any aches or pains, it's on that side. Yeah. You know? It's like, I forgot what I was saying. So, did, do you, do you help oh. so people here's the thing. get so up out of when, a subway so when they have, like, a I'm aching. Cart? I'm aching. Like Clay. I'm throbbing. Like Robin. And I just, <laughs> and I just, you know... If I see someone, I will do a visual pat down. Ooh, the ocular pat down. Okay. That's a good you one. Know? Pop, 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 pop. I'm like, mm. I look at them. They're like, pew, okay. Pew, and now, obviously, pew, pew, because not all disabilities are vis visible, okay? But, like, you know, look at socioeconomic class is. You know, and you look if I'm nice. going to help someone, it's <laughs> someone who might be able to give me a cash reward. Oh, my God. If you're sitting there, and you I like only a do <laughs> side quests for cash rewards or magical items. Double stroller. Ooh, the double. Do they have the kids with them in the stroller? The toddlers? I'm helping. Oh, I've done that. Because here's the thing. There's like a difference. And then like there's a part of me that wants the kids to see me helping and be like, this is this is how you behave in a civilized society. But you also know that there are the mothers who are just like, I got this. You see them. It's with oh, the, I, if you're on the if they're on the train. I offer like I'll I'll will give the because you know I'll give the out. I'm like hey hey hey, 
You want any help? I got it. All right. That's when they pinned over. They just pick up the the thing with the toddler and just I, hop down the stairs. You're like, like, well, oh I was, word. All right. I was gonna help. I could get the I could get the door for you if you need. They're like, I got it. And you're like, okay. That's when they plop down the stroller. They walk backwards out the emergency exit. And honestly, I'm so turned on and intimidated in one felt swoop. It's like wow. <laughs> It's so funny because when you see somebody in that position, the obvious thought is like, can I help you? But when you hurt, when you're ache, when you're tired, I just think I hope somebody else would help them. And I feel like somebody out there might feel bad and be like, well, you should. And it's like, I do. I try. When I can, I can. But I physically fucking, it's like I'm hurting right now. I'm physically in pain. I'm aching. I'm throbbing. I'm either sore or swollen. And it's like, I can't help my you. My lymph nodes are flaring up. I've got a sore throat. I'm <laughs> a little verklempt. My, my sciatica. My sciatica. Oh, my plantar fasciitis. <laughs> but at the end, of the, it's like, why isn't there elevators at every station? Well, because why do that would be that would be like treating everyone the same. It's like, why do I have to help the person down the stairs? We live in a planet with lots of people, and they get born and birthed. And so if you have to take so so I guess people but, who give birth no, to take the, the train thing, is we live in a planet with so many people, so many people that like someone's bound to help. And sometimes it's like jury duty. It's honestly it's like community jury duty, but it's like it's unwritten jury duty where it's it's just a, a fraction of your time. And you're just like, you know what? I'm not in the hurry that I that I think I'm in. And also, and also, it's not just that I'm helping this person ease their day. It's that whatever bottleneck traffic block that they would cause, I'm fixing that. And I I, I think that's what actually gets me to do it more than more than more than helping the individual. Fuck the individual. <laughs> it's a little bit of your anxiety just in the background. It's I just there's a traffic issue. And something needs to fix this potential traffic issue. Damn. That's that's really what it comes down I'm a, to. I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Has it ever happened to you where you see somebody, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, she got it. I'm hurting. I'm tired. So maybe you walk it, a little fast. It depends how busy it is. Not that busy. Oh. But, but, still lot, but still the train just got out. So there are other people. And so you don't help. You don't. And then you turn around and you see her struggling halfway down the stairs. Mm. But you're kind of already kind of too far. I've taken too many steps and I cannot turn back now. What do you do? How do you feel? Just keep swimming. Oh. I said I made my choice. And if I turn back now, then. That's why our kids end up the way they do, bro. That's, That's why they end up that way. Listen, sometimes. Sometimes you're the gazelle that gets away. Sometimes you're the one that gets eaten. I can't eat. That's, so, uh, That's so the wait, most wait, libertarian <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's like it's it's so uh with the with the it's so dar so much Darwinism. You know, it's like yeah, well, if you can't carry your kid down the stairs while you're while the father of your five kids is at home as is, is at and maybe work. you deserve to get kicked yeah, down those yeah. stairs. He's at work working really hard and you just got off of work and since you're first you go around and get up all the kids. I guess you deserved it. You deserve how dare you have children. So uh, there was there was a time recently I was walking back from the grocery store and I had I had two full bags. I was I was uh, I was gripped up with paper bags. And as I'm walking, there was a an older lady with a push cart who was just kind of slumped and like doing like a little shuffle as she was getting to her to her apartment. Did you kick her down the stairs, Chandler? No, I stole her shit. Okay. I stole her shit. My babka! And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, should I offer to help her to get to wherever she's going? Cause obviously she's not getting there in a hurry. But then I thought, you know, who am I to speed up a lovely stroll in a nice 50 degree <laughs> evening in the middle of January? And you know what? That's one of those weird pieces of consideration that people actually don't do, which is 
people are complicated. People are doing different things all the time. People got different reasons for doing different things. And like, you know, like a, a blind person who's waiting at the corner with their walking stick and maybe a guide dog doesn't need you to, without prompting, grab their arm and help them cross the street. You know? <laughs> no, that's, okay, so that's that's also, like, don't do anything without consent. That's the I think that's the biggest courtesy thing, is before you do anything courteous, ask first. The only one that I think is kind of a gray area is holding the door open for people. Oh, man, that's always. But because sometimes you'll hold it open and they're like, they're just a little too far. And then they feel the social obligation to like hurry up. And you're like, well, now I'm making you run to the door. And then in in my apartment and in your and in your building, too, there's two doors where it's like the main building and then the outside building. And so you go, you open up the first door and then you're like, okay, well, they'll go out that one before me and then they'll hold open the next one and then they don't hold open the next door and you're just like well fuck you i guess we're just only holding doors (laughs) one-sidedly now um okay am i not a person and you ever do you ever get that well it seems like you take people out opening the door for you pretty personally i only when i have already demonstrated the courtesy of opening for opening it for them. So you're expecting things in return. I I do expect a reciprocation. Sounds like a failure to me. No, that's that's the part of that's the difference between courtesy, courtesy and generosity. Generosity is doing things for the sake of doing it to to just be like there's goodness into the world. Courtesy is part of a social contract. Yeah, so you feel like you have to or you're expected to. I am expected and obligated to behave in a certain way that tries to mitigate uh, any sort of obstacle that I can or cannot. Like, if there's something in which however I'm operating, if I can mitigate obstacles to an uh, another individual in the way I'm operating, then I will try to do the courtesy of fulfilling or or uh, 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 doing whatever you can to because like oh, holding the door up, it's not opening the door, it's holding the door open. Yeah. I'm already going out. I'm gonna hold it. But now here's, but isn't there like a a real genuine lack of consideration for the fact that a lot of the train delays are for two reasons. It's people holding doors and people throwing trash on the tracks that cause track fires. So like holding the door for people actually, it now, slows it down. Holding uh, doors for trains, that's a three count rule. That's mm. a three count. You get a one, Ding. you get a two, and then by the third, you're just like, you're gone. Because usually, usually you hold the door and the door goes one, then it holds for a second, and then, and then it goes it two, back up. and then you gotta run in, yep. and then it goes three. And I think if you're like, if you're the person and you're like in a group of, I don't know, five or six, and everyone's trying to get through the turnstiles, and you're like, you're the first one through, so you're the you're the per- you're the representative really, who's like, they're they're coming, and you get two. You get two by the third one. If you don't get there by the third one, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because usually the conductor conductor looks, Mm -hmm. and they'll do this. They'll look, and then if there's nobody running to the back, they'll close the back or the front, whichever way you are, Mm -hmm. and then they'll leave one half of the train open. Yep. And and then they'll do like a little like over the intercom thing. They're like, please don't hold the doors open. You know that's as annoying as fuck when you hold the doors (laughs) open. If you hold the doors open. And they'll... what they'll actually do is they'll keep the they'll do the announcement a little long too just to give you that little extra time of just like figure your shit out and get in here hop it if you need to but that's you get 3 please stand clear of the closing doors please i know it's a Boom. recording but the second Boom. please sounds so much sassier or it's like, Please stand clear of the closing doors. Please stand clear of the closing doors. Boom, boom, boom. Please. Please stand yeah. clear. 
of the closing doors. You silly fucking idiots. Social obligate. Social obligate. Wingle. Social obligation, I think. F- Leave me alone. Social obligation. See, I did it right. I did it. I did it. Social obligation, I think, can feel very pressing, very overwhelming because there's like, we all kind of know. I was talking about respectability on TikTok, right? And one of the people was like, oh, but like, this is a real thing. And it's like, mm, but like, profession- professionality, respectability in business is made up, it's fictional. The only person who can decide if you're a professional or not is your peers, right? Or so, your superiors. Or your superiors. So if you are, let's say, the head person of a wrestling company, and you're the boss, mm. you can say whatever you want on Twitter, right? Yeah. Because you're the one on charge. The only you're, person you, who's who going to fire you. Yeah, who, who's the gonna, shareholders? Who's going who, to be mad at you, right? I don't know, Vince McMahon? You know what I'm saying? Like, who? nobody really should care because professionalism is bs it's just a social construct but it's not a real one because well, there's I mean, real it's consideration r- it's a classist construct it is it's professional because professional because here's the this is what it is professional courtesy yeah is corporate cur- wait professional like in a corporate courtesy yes. kind of way yeah, yeah the professional slash corporate courtesy <sighs> is like dude i'm so bad at corporate courtesy you show up dressed a certain way not because it's good for you, but because it's considerate for them. See, I am still hip, and like you have an interview at noon. Fashionably, you show up <laughs> at twelve twenty. What are you wearing? Um, I'm honest, honestly, I'm kind of hot. I got these like burgundy corduroys and a denim button down, followed by a corduroy blazer. Uh, French tuck with like a little bit of a pocket square hanging out, and my hair is like kind of slicked back with like just curls at the at, at the very ends. Um, I plucked the unibrow, and then I also added just a little bit of uh, of Vaseline on the lip to give it a little bit of sheen, um, and just to you know keep keep people focused on the money maker. <laughs> You're not like you're not doing like chucks or like Converse with slacks with an unburton or unbuttoned or half button shirt. Tell you what I got right now is uh is a weatherproof um like lace up boot that it looks professional, but honestly it's like it's like a a Dockers kind of kind of stuff. Like it's it it looks it's a it's a mono mono color kind of thing mm-hmm. but it's it's not leather but it's close to leather it's it looks good it looks put together but you can also you chandler's know, technicolor dream coat oh and that's the that's the shawl that goes over everything um it's got little uh granny square crochet squares of um little influential times of my life I love that. And that's how I go to an interview. And that's so much. I just imagine you <laughs> going to an interview and they're like, um, we have a few questions, but I was just wondering, this here, is that you with a machete? Well, <laughs> this is actually part of my work history. See, I did work in uh, catering in which I had to cut numerous coconuts for an event once. A lot of fun. So big machete. So what, you're, so what you're telling me is that this picture of you with a machete with an arrow pointing at this he, obviously human head where it says boss, you're saying that's nothing significant? Or well, what I'd like to say about that is I'm a goal-oriented individual. And um, when I set my mind to pursuing a project or or... Uh, enacting certain systemical organization structures. I like to get it done. And uh, that's just what sets me apart from some of the other applicants in this position. Actually, wow, it's so wild because you you mentioned race earlier and it didn't consider, it didn't, you You mentioned race earlier. You didn't consider race? And it didn't occur to me 
that like when it and I, obviously because we were talking about that specific inter kind of interaction, right? Which is a public place where there's kind of a social need, and so what what tends to happen and and people are gonna wild out probably, but I think it's kind of a deconstruction of like. Not, I'm not going to say yourself, like, in a deep, existential kind of way, but, like, socially, because, listen, you know, if you're on the train, that's why people love Jay Leno on the train. That's why people love Obama on the train, right? Because once you're on the, being on the oh, train like is Oh, like, when they see them on the train? Yeah, it's a normalizing force. Yeah. Because you're all there, you're stuck there, you're traveling, you're moving to a place together, and you're all enduring for once in your life's kind of the same exact kind of environment. While, mm. yes, if you're uptown, you might run into better train stations. Once you're on the train, you're subject to all of the interesting things that can happen on a train station, the violent things, the sad things, the different variety of stations, right? There's so much that can happen on a train. But outside of that, outside of that kind of example, you know, I think because I'm not a a white person, I sometimes struggle to understand the ways that white people have, like, for example, you go to a coffee shop, the person's in front of you, right? It's like a social consideration to let them go first. They're in front of you, right? Um, that's not a consideration. I'm just that's saying, just, I'm, no, that's the, them's, them's, them's the rules. But those are, mm, but those are all just like, Wait, are you meaning to tell me that there's white people out there who will show up into a coffee shop, see a line, and be like, mm, I could let them go first, but... You mean like the person who does the thing where they're like, <coughs> where they do this? <coughs> In the supermarket, they're, they vet, they're at the register. They just bought this can of lychee. Mm -hmm. mm, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. These are not good. Mm. Hold on. I know you're behind me. Hold on. <sighs> Who does that? Pete, you... Who does that? Like, Karens. Like, privileged, older, often white women. Okay, here's <laughs> also the thing where it's like, it's courtesy in customer service where, like, the customer is always right or you have to, like, I don't know, be generally appeasing here's, <laughs> here's i think i am guilty for working in customer service food service etc and catching a bit of an attitude and honestly i think i think that's acceptable i think everyone should get like at least five strikes a year one of the reasons why, because my whole job situation might be changing, and one of the things that's been a significant like, factor, the anchoring factor for me, is that my current position, I can kind of just say whatever I want to whoever I want any way that I want. That's hot. And maybe starting the 6th, if I decide to, I have to follow corporate rules. Ugh, corporate rules. <laughs> I can't. You. Black. Yeah, I can't be sexist, ageist, and fatphobic anymore. Well, what's the fun in going to work? Oh, sorry, I hiccuped a little bit. Can't smoke weed at work no more. That's a real... Wait, that's actually... Okay, that's actually something I really wanted to dive into this episode with, and I know we're kind of running no, out of time. No, no, what? I mean, we, we are, but we... Because I already kind of know where you're going. Weed courtesy is such an interesting, nuanced thing. And I think that every, like, sub subgroup, subculture has some sort of, like, common courtesy. There's, like, there's unwritten rules in every subculture that has to do with, like, the way you express generosity and the way you're supposed to let people in and yada, yada, yada. Here's a quick story, quick anecdote. I used to play... Um, a little game with my friends where we were bored after school we would get a little high and then we play a like soccer ball juggling game called uh, God you may or may not have heard of this but it's um, the rules are you have to like amongst uh, the group you have to get uh, like three or four however many set um, changes of possession 
while juggling the ball. And then after you reach the certain limit, you're then allowed to grab it and then like dodgeball throw it at someone in the group. And then the first one to get three strikes, a G O a D, you know, like horse would then, um, go against a wall and then everyone gets to throw the ball at them um, in like a firing squad kind of way. Now, there was a specific rule where if like we're cha- we're juggling, we change possessions, say that it has to change three possessions and then you get to throw it. And it's like I hit it, then you hit it, then I hit it and I pop it back to you and you catch it common courtesy is you don't throw it at me because i was part of the assist i thought that was the rule but because isn't that just hacky sack but with like uh, it's horse rules yeah it's it's hacky sack it's horse and it's um a dodgeball yeah because you're like one two pass then it's like one two three pass and then it's like but the, you're doing like foot foot elbow elbow yeah, forehead, and then the person's catching and it, foot, pass. foot, elbow, elbow, forehead, they left shoulder. They don't have to do the exact same. Oh, they pattern don't. Of things. Okay, but I understand. It was, just, it was just keeping it up in the air, juggling one. And so, like, if I kind of alley oop it to you, and then you catch it, the courtesy was, you don't throw it at me unless you have to. Unless you have to. It's usually if the person who passes it, the pass is not super good, so it's a little wonky. If then you have to like knock it back so they can knock it back to you again mm-hmm. and then you can pass it. And then you can pass it. But with that said, over the course of us playing this game, eventually it became a punishable offense to where the courtesy wasn't anymore a courtesy. It was a rule that was then stipulated by uh, like, hey, you don't it's do a social this. contract. It's a social. It's part of the social contract, but it was an unwritten rule. It was a house rules, basically. It like was monopoly. House, it's like house rules monopoly. Okay, when you have to go, and you pay money to the bank, where does it go? It goes to whoever's the banker, right? You mean to the ba- back to the bank? Yeah. A lot of people play it, and they take the money and they put it under the the. the they put it under the prison, right? Oh, right. Is, wait, wait who actually deals out the money then? I mean, that's the banker, but like, so there's like certain rules. Like, if you land and you pay tax, and there's a lot of house rules where they'll take the money and then they'll place it, and then it's like effectively, if you do this or do that, then you get the money. People, there's, there's it actually, oh, it's evolved to the point. Where Monopoly itself has even come out and been like, there's rules to make house rules. And there are common house rules. I love house rules. Look, I'm about to have a game night. I love house rules. What are you playing? So we're playing a litany of things. Birio Kart is one of them. Um, Oh, okay. Then there's going to be like a VR. And we've talked about it in another episode, but I do plan on hosting... A family feud game. Family feud. Do you think? Do you think I got it? You think I got it? I don't think oh, you got baby, it. Baby, you your asshole. Well, <laughs> that that may be the wrong one. <laughs> Ding. Okay. No, that's <laughs> okay. I don't think you had the family feud thing. I tried. I I appreciate. I, listen, listen. I don't know what you want from me. Okay. I'm I'm an innocent boy. One of my favorite um, house rules of beer pong that that we'd play, or really so, really technically it's just pong because it would be a table with the diamond of cups or the 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 pyramid of cups on either side, but it would be filled with water to you know preserve on. Yeah, because it's gross. It's gross. I actually. hate I love that. If you if you put actual beer in your beer pong cups, one, you're a real one. Don't ever change. I love you just the, the way you are. The first few parties I went to, we did that. That I felt, and you know me, I felt sick. like I wanted to participate. Oh no! Did you drink dog hair? Did you drink one of the little lints off the bottom of the? No, but I will say that uh, I did get matzo in my cups. 
You got matzah in a cup? Mazel. <laughs> so there was a there was a house rule where if you're shooting and you completely airball, the competing team or the opposing team, if they caught the air ball without bobbling it, could not bobble, caught it and threw it back at the person who threw the ball in the first place while saying the phrase, get down, Mr. President, then that would be a cup. What is going on? But the, here's the thing. The teammate of the person who initially threw the ball, who is now the de facto Mr. President, can jump in front of it, and in fact, like, it'll it'll nullify. It'll be a dead ball. Which I, president? Grover Cleveland, obviously. <laughs> I mean, it's Reagan. It's Reagan. Come it's on. I mean, come on. We were, we were in college. It's Reagan. <laughs> My favorite book is Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> Not right now. How much they shrug? We're fucking putting up numbers. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think uh, uh, another fun um, courtesy house game thing that we used to play is we would have a bong. It'd be a big bong. It'd be a pass aroundable bong. Sorry. Water pipe for tobacco use only. <laughs> Remember... Only smoke tobacco and drink liquor if you're of age. Yeah. Do not smoke cannabis. If it's got nicotine, it's for the teens. And so the hit the a blinker. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do. Oh, somebody's gonna be like the the, the Senate Judiciary <laughs> Committee is gonna be like, you want kids to smoke vapes? That's not true. I just want them to pull once, really, really hard, till it blinks. Till it blinks. <laughs> And then you feel a little lightheaded, and then you forget about uh, the last semester's uh, grades. Just all, you just forget. You just forget a little bit. It's a joke. Don't do it. So there was a game we play, and I don't think it ever had a name, but it was essentially the name game. And um, there were some courtesies in this game that I'm going to get to, but you would pack the bull, and as the bull packer, you would then say a name, any name. Anything at all that your heart desires that you think anyone else in the circle will guess that name. And if they can guess the corresponding surname or even end of the phrase, really, it was a very open ended thing. So I could I could say something like um, like like Chris and then everybody you, loves. Oh, no. But close. If I said if here's if I said everybody loves, and then you would say Chris. So if you said Chris, I would say Rock. You would say Rock, or you would say Jericho, because oh. the, the one I'm thinking of is Jericho. I really like how I'm the wrestling person, and I just didn't assume that you were gonna do that. I know, and that's the <laughs> fun of it. <laughs> that's actually pretty funny because I didn't assume that you were gonna do that. Mm -hmm. So I meta gamed. You tried to meta game. <laughs> That's the fun of the name game. But here's the thing. There were two defaults that were courtesy that regardless of what I'm thinking of, if you said the name, you would get the first hit anyway. The first one is Bill. Can you guess what the last name of Clinton? Oh, that's a good one, oh but that is not it. How am I getting it wrong? It's okay. It takes a couple of guesses, but it's always Bill who? Uh, 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 Bill, I don't know what, uh, Beta Ray Bill. Wait, is Bill first or last? B Bill's first. Uh, it's uh, Billy, uh, Billy Gunn? No. Billy Ray? We're not talking about wrestling anymore. Uh, Billy Ray? Billy Ray Cyrus? Think about comedians. You said Billy? Bill. Bill? Oh, that's, uh, uh okay, you know, uh. you know, <laughs> I, I know who you're talking about. Ginger, but he's bald now, and his wife is black. You're thinking of Bill Burr, but in fact... Are you kidding me? The answer is, it's always Bill Murray. Are you fucking kidding it's me? It's always Bill Murray. So even if we were playing the yeah, I, game, First of all, don't be mean to me. I, I, I described Bill Burr correctly. I just was, you know... Bill Murray? So, like, okay, if we're playing the name game, and I was actually thinking of infamous first baseman Bill Buckner... 
uh, for the was it the Red Sox or was it the Yankees? I think he was the Red Sox. The one who let the ball through his legs. Yeah, that guy. If I were thinking of Bill Buckner, but you said Bill Murray, I would be like, well, as as the courtesy, them's the rules. You get oh, it. Oh, I see. Because it's so obtuse or mm-hmm. so similar. So, for example, if I said, um, wow, this is a lady. And the tramp. You know what? I was thinking Lady Gaga, but oh. really, that was actually... That was... I'll be real. That, that was, was that was the real one. Because I said Lady Gaga. I was thinking Lady Gaga, but I also but thought oh, he's, he's going to think Lady and the Tramp. Th- so you have like a backup courtesy one. So like, okay, the last one, the last, the like of the group, like if you're if you're in the circle and we're passing it around and someone says Steve, but like the best Steve. <laughs> I'm Oh, Family Guy Steve. Steve Smith. Oh, that's American Dad, Steve. That is a very good Steve. Why did I say that? You know what I mean, American Dad. No, think of a firefighter during 9-11. Steve the Fireman? Mm, no. I'm sorry, person not from New York. I have my own 9-11 trauma. Sorry, think of <laughs> Mr. Pink from Reservoir Dogs. Oh, Steve Buscemi. It's Steve Buscemi, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Because he was in the... Oh my! You know what? I'm not gonna lie. If it wasn't for this, because it's obvious, if it wasn't it's for obviously a damn good cocktail. If you said, if you said Steve in 9/11, of course it's Steve Buscemi. It's, it's obviously Steve Buscemi. Uh, if you, for example, if I said um, John, I would say Stewart. Right? If I said like John 9/11, you would know. Yeah, John Stewart because he always does. Okay, so what if I said? Uh, well, it doesn't have to be nine eleven. We said, can we can get off nine eleven. So do I have to give you? In said, fact, we can we can forget about nine eleven. <laughs> no, never actually. forget. Wait, oh, never forget. I'm sorry. Uh, if I said Lindsay, oh, I'd say Loan. You know what? I have to give it to you. I was thinking Graham. Uh, but, that was the other one. That was the obvious other one. It's obvious for some reason when you say Lohan that you are. It's weird because I feel like I can tell if I said something. And you didn't have it as a backup. I kind of feel like I would know. You would know, but you also know, like, there's a certain level where you'll say the name. You have a name in mind. Someone else will say a different name, and you're like, "That's a better name." You win. Oh, I've never really. Yeah. Oh. That's hey, everything's made up. The rules don't matter. That's the point of common courtesy. Is you just kind of win little social points here and there. And it doesn't really matter. It's not like you're going to cash in those social points. But you know that you're winning in the game of being in a society. Man, I really do love min-maxing society. I sure do love sitting at home being like, yeah, so what I'm going to do to make sure that every social situation and interaction that I have is perfect is do this. It's not perfect, but you do come out on top. And that's that's really all that matters is is as long as you uh, hyper fixate and analyze every social situation that you've ever been in and then try to make a little flow chart of how to improve upon it in the future, then you can use all of that data to then maximize your courtesy points. And so that way, when you actually do a crime, you can then kind of rely on the alibi. Are you saying, of it's, like, like, <laughs> you saying it's like green energy credits? Yeah, it's like, it's like you do bad. It's like you know what? It's like a. It's like okay. So I'm a feminist. So that means I can yell at my girlfriend once a week. Mm, I'm not saying that you're saying that. I'm not saying you. I'm just saying somebody else is saying that. Just calling yourself a feminist doesn't do that. You have to read the feminine mystique at least once a week in order to then bolster. And then, but listen, you can you can yell at your significant other if you also help an elderly person in some sort of like social faux pas or yeah, something no, no. like if people perceive they can not that they can i don't want people to confuse you thinking that you're saying like yeah yeah sure you can you can yell at your girlfriend Wait, all you want <laughs> you're, you're saying that i don't have the power to just <laughs> endow people with like Hey, it's okay to be an asshole as long as you kind of make up it, make it up in extra credit points. 
That's really what it comes down to. Dude, if I said something like that, I would sound like, I don't know, a Christian. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. You know, well, if you want to make it into heaven, just like, you know, make sure that you balance your credit cards as far as humanitarianism. You can kill people, but as long as you feed other people at the end of the day, it's okay. In fact, you can condemn... Uh, entire thought processes, paradigms, ways of life. You can perpetrate genocide as long as you also reference that you were a victim in a previous situation. Man, you know what? It's crazy. Common, he's, the, he's the Jewish one. I, I didn't say nothing. Common courtesy <laughs> can get you a long way. It's so weird what's common because, you know, it seems like a joke, but, you know, it's like really strange and weird for people to look and see. And obviously, again, to be very clear, the people of Israel are under the control of their government. And like our government, their government doesn't always listen to them. But it's very oh. strange to see people look and see that people who live like 10 miles from them are getting hit with white phosphorus. And to be like, well, you know. Like, it, I feel like comedy. Okay, but you say that. But if some shit happened to Staten Island, you'd be like, <laughs> whoops. Oh, my God. You know what? Here's the thing. Oh, oh no. No, I'm not. I, can't, I cannot say that. Jersey. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> you wanted, you wanted to say some crazy shit. At. <laughs> you wanted to say some crazy. But it's common courtesy that you didn't say that. I think... It's so interesting because common courtesy, you know, as we as we wrap up, I think kind of stands as a placeholder for like it is like, yeah, it's like religion and like doing what you want. It's almost like religion just kind of put all common courtesy things into like text when it suits them, when it's well, well. You know, because like the, the big not, the big ten are are usually pretty good. It's I mean, the, aside from the whole God being like a selfish bitch and <laughs> being like mm, kind of toxic. First Testament God kind of toxic. I know this is a hot take. Can be real. I love me some First Testament God. First Testament to First Testament God stood on business. Was about what they were about, and they fucking rolled in with a golden tank and said they were about about it. First Testament God is kind of hot. First Testament God might choke you out a little too hard, but you're into it. It's like when you black out after being choked, you're like, ah, nah. <laughs> but you just came so hard. I was like, okay, that's it. Game over. Game over. Make sure that you don't forget. Check me out at L I V I. Wait, wait, L I V I N G underscore D A D underscore G O K Living Dad Joke. Living Dad Joke underscores in between each words, right? Right. It's gonna be right there in the description. Of course, don't forget to check out my man Chandler Does Jokes on Instagram as well as bumblebearcomedy.com. That's true. This is the man. I'm also Chandler Does Jokes on TikTok. And you don't post shit, so it's not. I funny. know, but at least I have brand unity across the thing. I know, right? I'm just living dad joke because I've been doing it for so long, okay? Uh, man. The dad joke died, and now it came back, and it's the unliving dad joke. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Remember that drinking is, drink is not, not required. Not, uh, not cur that's not courteous. That's discourteous. <laughs> drinking is not, not required. But it is recommended. <laughs> oh my god. Actually, you know what?